Hello and welcome to the lecture on introduction to solid state physics. In the last uh, video we have discussed about the concept of phonons and how this concept is useful in explaining the thermal properties of the solids such as the heat capacity, the thermal expansion and the thermal conductivity we had discussed. We also know that the heat capacity at constant volume can be defined as the fast derivative of the internal energy with respect to the absolute temperature at a constant volume. So the major thing that we should know to find out the heat capacity of a system is the internal energy. So in particular if we take a solid the lattice contribution is the dominating term in the internal energy of the solid whereas the electronic contribution is uh, uh, smaller and the rotational motion is negligible. In this particular video we are going to discuss about the heat capacity of the solids which arises due to the lattice vibrations and today we will discuss about the classically how it can be explained. In, in the year 1819 Dulong and Petit observed experimentally that the product of the atomic weight and the heat capacity of all the solids is a constant. This was an experimental observation and later on this was justified theoretically by considering the Boltzmann's equipartition theorem and what it tells? It tells that the kinetic energy per degree of freedom is equal to half kt for any system the kinetic energy per degree of freedom is half kt. If we take a solid and suppose the solid contains monoatomic atoms and the mass of each atom is capital M. So as a representative atom the kinetic energy of this particular uh, mass is can be written as half mv square where v is the root mean square velocity of the atom and this vx, vy, vz are the xyz component of the velocity v. So now if we apply the equipartition theorem to the kinetic energy of the motion of an atom inside a solid or it is the vibrational motion of an atom inside the solid then we can write that half mv square will be can be written as the component wise half mvx square, half mvy square and half mvz square and each of these components the kinetic energy will be equal to half kt and this is from the classical equipartition theorem and since there are three components or three degrees of freedom in the kinetic energy so the total kinetic energy of the system will be 3 by 2 kt. So this is the total kinetic energy for a single atom of mass m inside the solid and we are assuming the simple harmonic motion or the harmonic approximation in that case the mean kinetic energy is always half of the total energy. This we know that for the simple harmonic motion the average kinetic energy can be expressed as half of the total energy. So the rest half will be the potential energy. Therefore the average potential energy can also be written as 3 by 2 kBt. So this is the average kinetic energy for a single atom inside the solid and this is the average potential energy for a single atom inside the solid. Now the total internal energy for a single atom will be 3 by 2 kT plus 3 by 2 kT it will be 3 kT and suppose there are Avogadro number of atoms then the total kinetic energy plus the total uh, potential energy can be added up and we can get the total internal energy of the system that will be 3 times n k b t where this n is the Avogadro number. This is the number of atoms or the number of molecules in a particular solid per, uh, for a given atomic weight that means the 
suppose we are taking copper means the atomic weight of copper is 63.5 so 63.5 gram of copper contains this Avogadro number of atoms so that means one mole of a substance this is the corresponding internal energy now if we know the internal energy we can take its partial derivative with respect to temperature at constant volume and since the volume is constant the number of atoms is going to remain the same so the internal energy can be expressed as 3 n kt and the molar heat capacity because here we are considering for one mole of the substance so this cv can be called as the molar heat capacity since it is for one mole of the substance it is not the specific heat rather it is the molar heat capacity which is uh, defined for one mole of the substance so if you differentiate it with respect to temperature it will become 3 n k b and since n is the Avogadro number and k b is the Boltzmann constant the product of these two will give us the ideal gas constant so the molar heat capacity of a particular solid is can be given as 3 r and this we are getting it from the classical ideas that is by applying the classical equipartition theorem here we see that this molar heat capacity is the same for all the solids it is not dependent on temperature rather it is constant for all the solids but when we do an experiment and we measure the molar heat capacity for different materials then we see that it is a function of temperature this is the variation of the heat capacity with respect to temperature so here we can see initially the heat capacity is going to increase and finally it saturates at the value 3r so uh, using the classical equipartition theorem we can see that only at high temperatures the heat capacity can be properly explained whereas at the lower temperature we need to apply the quantum mechanical ideas so dulong petit law matches with the experimental observations only at higher temperatures so what happens at the lower temperature or at the intermediate temperature that will be given by using the quantum concepts which we will be discussing in the next video where we will consider the Einstein's theory and later on we will be discussing about the Debye theory of the solids.